Angie, are you going to want a podium? What? You want it? Okay, we need to. Oh, she, you guys heard her before I did. And you can't hear either. No. <laughs> but he, he, he follows instructions really well from the Lord. And, Well, this has been absolutely a fabulous time, I think. You know, God's just, I, I've, been, I've been getting thank yous all morning, and, and they're to you, really. And, and one of the last ones was how really kind and nice, kind, she really is stressed kind, uh, you all are. And it's true. And even when we come with extra baggage, you know, we, we get it, we drop it off, hopefully. And if you haven't, then just drop it here before you go out those doors <laughs> if you still have anything, you know, left that's kind of sticky or gooey or whatever. So anyway, we don't want to get stuck anywhere along the line because this is a journey we want to enjoy. Enjoy the journey. <laughs> so anyway, um, our speakers have pretty much said it all. I did want to emphasize one thing that one of them said last night. I'm sorry, I can't remember which one of you. But it's that fabulous scripture in Philippians 4, 8 that says, um, it, well, <laughs> um, no, wait, what am I? Um, okay, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, Whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. You don't know how much that verse has helped me. I think every Christian, and you can uh, memorize it in a different translation if you want. Uh, I still love this kind of writing. But we need to think on the things that God says to think about. And that includes the thing, the beautiful things he's created. So when you're all jittery and you're nervous and you can't sleep at night, and we have to practice these things. We have to practice. Um, lay there and think about some beautiful place you saw, or maybe you saw it in a picture or on a TV or something. Some creation of God. I mean, there's some right around this room, I think. Looks like those are <laughs> like beach scenes, but they could be stripes, so don't, don't go by me. So anyway, imagine the, the prettiest place that you could ever imagine and just think on that and rest and find peace because that's all the, the things, those are beautiful things. Those are, and then tr uh, trustworthy things and friends that have been, um, your friends and have been faithful friends and all kinds of things. Ask God to take you into those, those places, but get your mind trained to get off of the what ifs and the if onlys. If I had only done this, if I only hadn't done that, well, that is all like my mom would have said, spilt milk. That is sour nut milk by now. So you need to get, you need to move on and let God clean it up because you don't want to be trailing that smell along with you. And so we need to keep going. We need to enjoy the journey and um, drop off the extra baggage. And that spirit of laughter when it hits you really helps. So, you know, laughed often, practice laughing. It's a good thing. They're, you know, they used to make, well, we called them tapes then. They probably have CDs. But people just laughing, or I remember one man in particular, and if you weren't happy or if you were having a bad day, turn that thing on and you, you couldn't help me. He was so silly laughing so hard all the time. So pretty soon you started doing the same thing. So anyway, that would be um, one thing I'd want to remind you of. But today we have a special treat another special treat, and uh, it's my pleasure. You don't have to get up quite yet, Angie, but uh, Angie Wiersma is going to share with us. She was formerly Angie Coffee. Isn't that a great name, Coffee? I mean, for you coffee lovers, wouldn't you love to be able to call yourself Angie Coffee? And uh, her dad, this is how he used to answer the phone for years. It was like on their recorded message. He said, you have reached the coffee residence. We can't come to the phone right now. All the beans are roasting, but we'll call you when it's time to brew. <laughs> and Angie's mother is here. Sandy, right there, can you raise your hand? 
Well, I want you to go home and tell your husband I've been waiting for probably about 20 years for a call from him that the coffee's ready. <laughs> so those babies are over brewed and over, you know, anyway. So when it comes to mind with Angie, I ask, I ask a really good friend, what do you think of when it comes to Angie? And she said, tenacious. You are tenacious, girl. I think you have a reputation for being tenacious and don't even know it. I mean, she hung in there waiting for her man of God till she didn't want to hang in there anymore, but she, she got him. And you know what? He was right where we told her he would be. We said, you know what? God will bring him right to where you are. Well, he'd been there for a long time. And uh, so anyway, their eyes got open to each other, and now they have three children. And um, she used to work with kids. God prepared her even for her own through working with other people's kids, teaching them to pray for one another, getting them filled with the Holy Spirit. I mean, from the earliest age. So if you need any tips, don't maybe ask her today, but... Um, she might be anxious to get home to them, but she's a good one to get help, help from, even though she might be younger than you. I know she's younger than me, so. And Gail thinks that's funny, so it's okay. <laughs> so, Angie, could you come now? Um, Angie has been to countless countries ministering for the Lord. And, you know, I want you to know Africa found out that all American women aren't bad girls. You know, they have this horrible, I don't know who, who did this to us, but we've carried this wrap around us uh, from the, what people in the world think of American women, and they put it on all of us. But they didn't put it on Angie, because she set them straight, huh? <laughs> so set us straight. We're fun. Good morning. Um, uh, I'm going to have to look up tenacious because at the moment um, my mind is not thinking about how great that word might be or not. And I hope you, um, I hope you aren't thinking that this morning you're going to be chilling out and just cruising through the next little bit before you get to go home because we're not going to just cruise. We're going to wrap it up. We're going to wrap you up like a present and send you out. But before that, you're going to learn some things that God has showed. And first, we're going to wrap um, our weekend with showing you some um, quotes from your lovely speakers, our JV team <clears throat> of ladies. And I think I'm the oldest of them. So we opened up with Rebecca. God has a plan in your life, and he's rooting it into you. I'm telling you this now and going through these things because there are so many good little nuggets that was spoken this the course of these couple of days, and I couldn't possibly quote them all, but this is really, really cool because if you're not rooted, you're not going to stand long. So remember that God's plan for you is rooted into you. It is not going away. Okay. Let's go to the next one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Jessica Miller reminded us that you've got to give up control and surrender. So we've got ourselves a little sign there that says surrender, Jess. <laughs> so you need to find yourself at that stoplight or that sign every once in a while. And give up control and surrender. That is all, really a big key in our journey because God is in control. We're not. Gosh, I wished it was different sometimes, but thank God it's not. Gosh, if we were in control of our lives, we would have screwed it up a long time ago. That is the truth. Okay, our next one. It's all right. We've learned how to wait. God wants to make your heart like a well-watered garden, Miss Carol Hilbrandt was telling us. Do you remember the picture of the heart in the hand with the garden coming out? Remember the, the, the vision. Your heart is the key in all of this, really, because you're, that's where we, we want God to go in and root us and grow us. And our journey is not stagnant, right? It is not stagnant. We are going all over the place, but if we continue to allow God to pour in and allow ourselves to open ourselves up to saturate what he's given us, and to absorb what he's doing, then we can't help but be transformed. Next. Heather gave us a little word and said that God knows what he's doing. He's working on your heart. He knows what he's doing. He's working on your heart. 
Thank you, Heather, and your, um, your, your heart in sewing us that waiting sometimes is the hardest thing to do sometimes, and, and, and we need to remember so much in those seasons of waiting. And um, every one of us have had seasons of waiting, and those are usually the worst, honestly. I think sometimes the waiting periods are worse than the highway fast accelerated periods, because at least you feel like you're doing something. Sometimes waiting feels like you're not doing something, but really, that's the moments where we're supposed to be in his presence. That's when we're supposed to be <clears throat> with him. Go ahead to the next one. Maria had a word and told us, the Lord, teach us to wield your sword with pinpoint accuracy. We are, we are warriors women. We are. We might be feminine. We might have um, nail polish on our fingers, but we know how to pick up a sword and we know how to slay giants and we know how to cut their heads off. Just remember that, okay? Just remember that. Go ahead, next. Uh, you can't see it. I'm sorry. The blue is, um, is Cindy Shad told us to choose life. Every decision you come to, choose life. Make that decision. Don't make the other opposite decision. Don't wander around. Don't choose death. Choose life. Choose that one. That's the best decision and really the only decision. Okay, next. I think it's so cute. It makes me laugh just giggling at this image. I'm sorry. It's yellow with that bicycle. You're living in the good old days right now. Embrace it. Emily gave us the word last night. Remember that your day that you're in right now is so critical. God is doing so much in the day that you're in right this minute to enjoy where you are because you're not going to get there again. It's going to be your past. You won't be able to have that again. And then we want to be able to live current in our best And sometimes there are some rocks in the road and some twists and turns, and that happens. But if we can remember to enjoy it and remember to embrace it, because God has us where we are for a reason. Sometimes we don't always know why that is. We don't always know the answers. We don't always get the whys. But I'll tell you what, usually in the future, we get the whys. We get the answers. So enjoy where you are right now. Next. Uh, Recognize the fear and do it anyway. Our youngest, Miss 27-year-old Gabby, says to us yesterday, I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to stand here. I didn't want to go. I'm going to just run. And I'm so proud of her, and I'm proud of the life that she has pushed through the acceptance to say yes to God and to go anyway, to do it anyway. Obedience is, is the absolute key. One of the things I have learned, ladies, is that my last one? One of the things I've learned with, with obedience, and you've heard this time and time again this weekend about obedience, oftentimes, especially us older in the Lord Christians, people who have been Christians for a while, we've learned that obedience is, is really important. And, but what we've learned is that somehow along the line, we've almost thought that because we've been obedient, that we might be exempt from the trials and the challenges and the hardships, Right? 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 Because we, we just do. We think, gosh, and God, I've said yes. I've done this. I've done this. I've done this. Why, why is this happening? Or why is this even coming up on my door? God is after more in us. And I know that when you think about it, obedience is the key to your destiny. Obedience is not, let me put it this way. We don't do what is right to earn ourselves trophies and prizes. We, we, are, we are obedient because that's where our des- to get to our destiny, to get to our end result, to get to the inheritance, to get where we're supposed to go, wherever that is. I want to take us to, um, to Ruth today, but I also <clears throat> want to remind us that through the whole weekend, our joy to enjoy the journey requires us to actually learn how to joy first. You have to know what joy is before you can enjoy. And most people do think that joy is the happy feeling, and it's not. 
Joy is actually a noun. Joy is a thing. Joy is a gift. The um, scholars say that joy is favor and grace revealed. It's when you've understood and when you can see that God has done something, is doing something, is there, there's a grace and you've re- it's been revealed, you can actually obtain joy. You know. It's not something that your, your emotions are going in and out of. That's why people say that you can go through any trial, any challenge, anything that comes your way, as long as you understand that God's with you and you joy in his presence. God tells us the joy of the Lord is our strength. We also understand, uh, oh, goodness, thank you. And this podium, by the way, is small. (laughs) Can we put in a comment card to have this, like, to standard? (laughs) I'm sorry, but it's, like, not even a standard. It's not even a standard issue. I mean, they... (laughs) We can put in a comment card. Maybe by the time we're next year, here next year, <laughs> it'll be different. So um, the Lord was reminding me um, that there's, especially with Easter that we just we just celebrated, and my kids are so cute. They're like, "Can we Easter again?" <laughs> I like Easter. Can we Easter again? And I looked at my my little boy at the time, and I said, "Ryan, who's three? You can Easter every day, Ryan." Mommy's going to show you how to Easter every day because that is really the key. So Jesus endured the cross, which was the ultimate in everything. And it, it is the most important of who we are and why we believe what we believe in, in our, our relationship with him and how we recognize ourselves and identify ourselves as the cross. But Jesus endured that because of the joy that was set before him. He understood stress. He understood fear. He understood all of those things. But he also knew that it was the joy that was set before him that was going to allow him to endure what he was going through. Romans 5.3 says, we can rejoice too. <laughs> No, I know most of us don't like to enjoy and rejoice in the hardships. But it says we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. For we know that they help us develop endurance. Man, I, I would rather not. True, <laughs> I would rather not let the Lord help me develop endurance. You know, I, I would wish that that was different. But it's not. No matter how much we wish that things were different in those regards, it's just not. As many times as we wish that our lives would not hit the bumps, would not take the turns, would not spin out, would not hit the detours, it just doesn't happen that way. And the one thing I want you girls to remember before we hit Ruth is that as long as you can get some resolve in that, your life is going to be so much better. But I'll tell you why. As long as you can remember and can get to yourself to not be so shocked, surprised, alarmed that trials or challenges are hitting you, but we do. We act like, oh my gosh, right? What? And it happens. So we always act shocked and surprised this is happening to us. This is the way it goes. Nobody's exempt. Nobody. I mean, you see... um, you know, faithful pastors and a lot of people who you admire have hardships in their lives. You know, no one is exempt and, and, and get a, no one gets a pass. If we can grab hold of that and think, you know what? It's not that it's okay, but it's okay. You know why it's okay? Because we know that he's with us. We're, we're, as long as we abide in his presence and we set our eyes on the joy that is before us, knowing that we can endure through anything that hits us, we will indeed obtain it. Even as Heather said on uh, yesterday, we can obtain it. <clears throat> so I want you to think about joy, much like wisdom. You know, wisdom is not a, <clears throat> it's a noun as well. And they refer to joy as a her, just like wisdom as well. She. I love that. 
So let's go to Ruth for a minute, because I'm going to explain a few things about Ruth that I love, and I love her journey. I don't love everything about her journey, but I love her journey. So we're going to go to Ruth for a little while, and um, I want you to... um, we're going to do some highlights because we're going to, we're doing highlights today, but I'm going to get as much of this word into you as we can before we go without reading it all the way through. So I'm going to give you my version. Can I give you kind of like a, what do we call those cliff notes version, Angie version? Okay. So Ruth goes to a new, she's actually living in a place called Moab. She is met by a family, Elimelech, and Naomi and her two sons. They left Bethlehem to go to Moab because there was a famine in the land. So they left. They married two women from Moab, which Ruth was one of them. The other woman at the moment, I can't remember her name. It's not important because we're talking about Ruth. So she marries. We know that they lived there for about 10 years. The father-in-law dies. The husband dies and her brother-in-law dies. She's left with her mother-in-law and sister-in-law. The guys in the family are, are gone. Naomi, who is the mother-in-law, says, I'm, I'm going back. I have nothing left here. I'm going back to my country, going back to the land with my family. So the two girls decide they are going to go. And along the journey, Naomi says, what are you guys doing? You know, go back to your mother's households. Go back there. There's nothing for you where I'm going. Ruth digs in. She digs in and she says, no, I'm going with you. There was nothing for Ruth either where she was, as far as she was concerned. She says, I'm not going to go. She actually, this is a famous verse where we hear, "You you are my people, right? Where you go, I will go. Where you live, I will live. Your people will be my people. So she goes with Naomi They find themselves there, and they have to survive. They have to live, and so she finds a a field that she can work, and she gleans the, uh, the field, and she gleans after the harvesters have gone through. She comes behind, and she picks up the remnants and the leftovers, and, the, and she was allowed to, and she took it home to help her, her mother-in-law. Now, her mother-in-law was not a young girl, so she's helping Day after day, we get Boaz comes into the picture. Who's this girl? Who does this, belong, who does this woman belong to? Because she's not mine. He knew that. They said, oh, yeah, she came with Naomi. Oh, okay. Let her go. He gave permission, and he told the men, basically, let her do what she's going to do. It's fine. Give her permission. Give her access. And leave her alone, because she's pretty. So... Over time, we're seeing Ruth day after day going and gleaning the fields. Ruth probably thought that she was just gleaning and picking up remnants and picking up pieces. But really what God was after was giving her a full harvest that she had no idea was ahead of her. But in the moment that she was there picking up and gleaning pieces off the floor and off the ground... That didn't seem like very significant at the time. It didn't look too great at the time. And when she came from that, that closed door a minute ago, it didn't look too exciting. Sometimes when we turn and make a direction change, sometimes that direction change doesn't look as wonderful as we thought it would. It's okay. Just keep going. Just keep moving. She hit the door, the closed door, when her family, her husband died, her husband's brother and dad. There's the closed door. Look for the redirect, ladies. I promise you, I promise you it will come. Every closed door that happens always indicates a redirect. He's not going to leave you at the closed door. He's not going to leave you in a place of devastation. He's not going to leave you in the place of loss. He won't leave you in that place. He won't. He promises not to. But he don't want to stay there. I know some of us at that closed door, when those things happen to us, we find ourselves so devastated, so angry, so upset, because it might be a loss, it might be a job change, a loss, um, an opportunity gone, a friendship moved away, whatever those closed doors are. Sometimes we find ourselves there and we're so devastated by them that we can't get up and move. 
some of us find ourselves beating that door down, trying our hardest to get that thing to open back up. He doesn't want to leave you there. If that's you, if you have experienced a door that you can find yourself in your mind at this moment, that you can't get past, you are doing your hardest and your strength to, to beat that door down because you want that, that's the way you want, that's the path you want, that's the whatever it is you want, come, let him pick you up and redirect you because you're not going that way anymore. God has got resurrected power ahead of you, a redemption, restoration. Like Ruth came through this place and said, I don't know why I'm going with you, but I'm going. I'm going to pick up the pieces off the ground and I'm just going to do what I need to do to survive and to provide for her and I. And God blesses her in that, gives her favor in that. Every turn she went, there was favor. Why? Because God had a purpose, a destiny, an end result, an inheritance for her that she had no idea because she was doing what she was doing. She was being obedient and faithful with the small things. Didn't look too great. Didn't look too victorious. Didn't look too wonderful. But that place that she was in was where she was at, and she joyed in it. She placed herself in submission and surrendered herself to it. And God honored it. Didn't look wonderful, but she, he honored it. And as we know, later in the story, we get to a place where Naomi advises her, go to Boaz, go to the threshing floor, and gives her instructions. Interesting instructions. <laughs> go to the threshing floor. Don't bug him when he's eating. Don't bug at the man when they're eating. Just let him eat, wait till he falls asleep, uncover his feet, and lay, lay there at his feet. Scholars say the reason why to uncover the foot was so that he would eventually awaken because he got cold. Very spiritual. So that, you know, but, you know, that's really common sense. So she's there, and he startles. He's awakened. Who is this? Oh, it's your maid servant. It's just your servant, Ruth. And she goes through this, this conversation with him about how he, she knows that he is her redeemer. Now, back then, um, family lines, you went back to certain family lines and your land and your name your namesake, your, your inheritance in the natural can be redeemed when you marry again within those structures, within those, you know, your, your family line. Well, Boaz was one of them. He was up in the family line, very wealthy. She could have had any other man. Boaz wasn't young. I don't know what he looked like. I'm assuming he was handsome. We have to. He was awesome, girls. We have to assume that. So she goes and she explains to him, and he says to her, I will do it. I will redeem you and your family and your husband and your father-in-law. And so he goes to another person who technically was the person who, if they were going to redeem, that was the person. He went to him and had the chat with him, and he declined. Darn. If I was Ruth, I would have been heartbroken. He declined me. But he didn't, she doesn't know that because Boaz had it in his heart to redeem her no matter what. So he said no. The first guy says no. Thank the Lord he said no because it made Boaz the redeemer. Our redeemer does the same thing. I want to explain something to you. So here's our closed door. Here's our moment of game changing, whatever that is. We don't find ourselves laid out on the ground, unable to move. Now, I'm not, I'm not explaining, like, uh, I don't want to build a whole lot of fences because I know that there are some things that are so devastating. I've experienced them myself where I'm paralyzed and cannot get off the floor. They're that painful. I understand this. What I'm saying is once we've realized that the door has been there, the closed door is there, and we are not going through it for whatever reason, we look for that redirect, we go. You turn, and sometimes it's through that process, and it's through those picking up the grains, picking up the small pieces, picking up 
what you're supposed to be gleaning. You're gleaning from the other people in the spirit. You're gleaning. You are. You're picking up from people. You're picking up from your pastors. You're picking up the word from, from, from what he's giving you in the word. Then when you're ready and when the Lord is ready to redeem you, restore and cause something new and fresh to happen to your life, he's going to ask you to go to the threshing floor. The threshing floor is the place where they went and they thrashed and pressed really hard and stomped on the grain so that it would free the grain from the plant. Look at this, girls. Look at this. I don't think that sounds like a lot of fun personally to go to the threshing floor. I'd rather someone else beat the heck out of something else. I don't want to do that. And I don't want to be thrashed either. But let's, let's look at this for a second. Sometimes when we're just, when we're, we've experienced something that is, that we know, and we know that we're in that transition and we're ready to go and we're just, just there, he might ask you to go to the threshing floor. That doesn't look like a redemption, does it? It doesn't look like a restoration, but it is. He's going to ask you to go to the threshing floor and what are you going to do? You're going to surrender yourself. You're going to lay at his feet. You're going to find yourself in his presence and you're going to tell him, you are my redeemer. And he's going to take the grain, the new life, out of the old one. That's what happens. Just like the grain comes out of the plant in the threshing floor, that's what is happening. We, but we have to come to this place where we, un, we let that. Gosh, when we're coming through places of hardship and places where we don't like change, we don't like redirection. We don't. We like the road we're on. And then sometimes we think, no, I like her road. I'd like her road for a change, Lord. I know I've said that once or twice. Lord, I'd like that bank account, and I would like that house, and I would like that life. That life looks really good. And it's not the one that he has for me. Now, I'm not saying it's not going to, but right now that's not my life. I'm, I'm only obedient and can only be obedient with what I have, what he's given me, understanding that there is, there is more as long as we can joy in where we are. And that only comes when we submit ourselves, surrender ourselves to his presence. There's no other way around it. And it is a beautiful thing. And I'm seeing this weekend so many of you flying. I'm seeing a lot of wings. I'm seeing a lot of transformations. I'm seeing a lot of shifting of hearts. And the coolest thing is that God was just explaining to me and showing me that so many of you are trying to beat that door down, trying your hardest to get that door back open. And he's wanting me to, the word he gave me specifically for you, tell them, if I can gather your hearts, because I can't lay my hands on you today, we're not doing any ministry. If I could gather the hearts of those, okay, if that's you, I'm at the door and I'm just having a hard time and I want to, I want to back open. I'm just having a hard time understanding or realizing that that's just not where I am or where I'm going. If I can gather your hearts for a second. God wanted me to tell you, I'm not going to leave her there. You need to know that. You're not being left there. Look for the redirect. It will always come. He will always tell you, always show you. He's always faithful. The restoration is coming. The redemption is coming. The rebuild is coming. Whatever those things are, they are coming. It's absolute. The promises of God are yes and amen. We say it all the time, but do we believe it? Yes and amen. So I love, I love, I love the fact that all weekend long we've been hearing very similar thread, right? It's a very similar thread or a very similar vein going into each other. And he's also shown me a long time ago when we were preparing for this weekend that all that was going to be said this weekend and all that was going to be done, whether worship or words or prophecies or, or um, sharing, that whatever 
all those, those things were coming together and they were going to form this fabric. They were going to be woven together. No start, no end. No beginning, no end. Also realizing that when it starts and the other one transitions, you can't tell. Seamless was the word the Lord said. Seamless. Doesn't always seem like that, but I know that in the spirit, he's creating a fabric in us as we, as we continue to gather together and join our hearts together. He's making us seamless. Your relationships, our churches, we are becoming seamless. I'm going to pray for you because we're running, we're at our time, and then I want mom to come and she's going to ultimately close us. Yes? <laughs> All right. Ladies, are you blessed? Are you feeling good? Are you feeling challenged? Are you feeling hopeful? Okay, good. Super quiet. Super quiet. So that's okay. So we're just wanting to make sure um, because there really is a prophetic word in this. Lots of them, actually. Lots of imagery, lots of prophetic, especially the threshing floor. I'm sorry, but that was a key for me when I was uh, hearing it because I didn't know all there was uh, in the spirit with that. That as we become, cl- as we get closer and closer sometimes to our redemption, to the end result of whatever it is that we're waiting for, that promise, that oftentimes we're going to be asked to go to the threshing floor. You might get thrashed. Oh, well, you're going to get redeemed. It's okay. <laughs> Believe me, it's going to be okay. You're, um, you're beautiful. Your hearts are beautiful. God has created us together, and I'm just so excited to see what you um, have pulled in and grabbed hold of and said yes to in your life. And, um, and I could say that for myself because, boy, when I look at my, my 10-year-old version of me, I wasn't standing here. Uh, nowhere close. So let's pray. I'm going to pray, and then mom's going to come, and she's going to finish us and tell you what to do or whatever it happens to happen today, okay? So I want you to um, close your, just close your eyes for me, and I want a couple. I'm just going to be a little specific about this for a second. If you found yourself at the door in your mind and in your heart, and you are one of those who desperately wanted that back open and you are doing your best to get that thing back open in your own strength, trying your best to figure it all out. I want you to put both of your hands up. We are going to surrender today, ladies. We're going to give it up because that's what happens. We give up so he gives more. Jesus, I'm going to pray today as we uh, have women all over this room gathered together. God, coming together in one heart, realizing, God, that we want to joy in this journey that you have us on. And we want to enjoy you. We know, God, that in the process of that, you bring us light. You bring us hope. You bring us revelation. And we want to be faithful. We want to be faithful for every hand that is right, that is up. For every hand that is up because they are at the door trying their best to beat down something that, God, you may have said no to, that you may have said, no, this is not the way. That's not what we're going to do. We need to do something else. Let it go. I pray, God, that those women would surrender that heart, would let it go and say, God, this is, this is up to you. I want the redirect. Show me where to go. Direct me. Guide me. Give me the right way. I don't want to go my way. I want to go your way. I don't want to stand at the door where it's closed and dead and, and, and broken. I want to turn around. I want to go 
through the threshing floor. I want to be redeemed. I want to be restored. I want to see the inheritance that you have for me. That's what I want. Jesus, we pray that those arms and the hands and the hearts that are there, God, that you would come and bind those girls together in their heart side and just squeeze and hug and give them, God, that reassurance that you have not left them there. You have not left them there. You have not left them in pain. You have not left them in hardship. You have not left them in frustration. You have not left them in anger. You have not left them. You know, you know, you know, you know. So we just proclaim healing. We proclaim a salve that would just come and touch hearts and just release those hearts. Release those hearts to say, God, I want more of you and I want my brokenness mended. I want to put together so that I have the strength to turn and go the right, the direction that you're asking me to go, the direction, the redirect. God, that is where we're asking. We want to just be guided. We want to know. Jesus, for the rest of us, as we are here today and, go, and, and, and just closing out our day, God, take us on a killer, killer journey. I pray, God, that as we continue one step, one foot after another in obedience to you, that you would continue to show favor, that you would continue to come alongside and guide. You said in your word that you guide us with your eye. Jesus, thank God, you know ahead of us where we are going to step before we ever step there. And we thank you and we are um, so grateful, so grateful that you have been there already. So we just, um, we just re- release ourselves to you again today. Give ourselves up and we surrender. Some of us are going to find ourselves on the threshing floor in a couple of minutes, in the next couple of days, in the next couple of weeks. Some of us are going to find ourselves at the threshing floor asking God for you to redeem. And I just pray, God, that there would be such promise, such hope, that you would give us help to endure the perseverance, to endure what is coming, because we know, God, that you have joy on the other side. It is the joy that is set before us that we can go through anything, tackle, hurdle, climb, anything. Just ask God in your name that you would just um, do what we could not even speak with our words. I feel sometimes in my own body that I just don't have the words. I just feel like I might come out of my skin because I can't figure the right word, but you know. And so I pray, God, that in the spirit, even if I can't say the right words to pray, that you would give the right word to the right woman at the right time and give them the revelation that they might be able to sink into, that they might know the path that you've set them on because it is a unique path that is only fulfilled by their feet. It can only be run by them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. She's a preacher girl. And we need preachers. So, girls, rise. A couple of things. Um, I think that message was filled with hope in one single word, and that's that redirect. I mean, I love that. I haven't even, I've never, that was God, Angie. I mean, I know you know that, but, um, and it brings hope. It's like you, you come to the like closed doors. I mean, you come to this, or a precipice. And it looks like the only place off is off the cliff or through doors that aren't going to open and you lose all your hope. But God wants to give you, he wants to restore your hope today. Closed doors don't mean God left you and that God doesn't have any place for you to go. He just wants to redirect you. So we have to surrender our will, though. I mean, I'm telling you, some of us are very willful. (laughs) <laughs> he's working on us a long time you know why some of us are here on earth so long there's a lot to do so 
<laughs> I, don't, I don't want you to pray for short lives, though. That's a, you know, you're here to be a blessing as he keeps redirecting you. <laughs> But, you know, I, we have stubborn, stubborn self-wills, and we bang our head on those doors that are closed, and we kick that thing, and we swear sometimes, and we do silly things. But anyway, um, get, get ready, get hopeful, get expectant for redirects, and say, Lord, when you're giving me a redirect, let me, let me at least get it. You know, like you don't even know you're being redirected because we're so stuck in the old path. So, Father, I just pray that you'd um, help us to know when you are redirecting us. Sometimes some of us don't even know when, when we've hit a, a, a d shut door. We just walk right straight through the glass or whatever we, th we do. I, we just make us smarter. <laughs> make us full of wisdom. Make us more like Jesus. Quick, please. So <laughs> we don't injure ourselves or those around us. And so I, we just pray that, Lord, you just fill our hearts and our minds with peace, but with hope, with new hope. And thank you, Lord, that you've delivered me from some of those places where there was no hope. And so we could all say that. And so um, let's just on three all say praise the Lord together. One, two, three. <laughs> praise the Lord. You delivered us. You're still delivering us. And he hasn't left us. He hasn't forsaken us. He's still with us no matter how far down that hole you went. You know, he, he's the only one. He can lift us out. So, but one good piece of wisdom I got from someone once is don't go digging in any deep holes that you might not get out of. So sometimes, you know, you think you have to unravel your past so you can go forward. That's a lie. That's a lie. Um, don't go back. That's where your closed door is. It's not in front of you. So keep going. And Angie, you didn't know uh, what tenacious meant, so I'll let you look it up when you get home. But th that's not my point. I want you to learn that for yourself. But um, my point is I looked over. I mean, it's so confirming to me what you shared or what this person, in fact, that was Jeannie, uh, said to me about you, what the word was for you. And she was the one that said tenacious. I, I look over when uh, Lori Mendenhall here got to on her iPad and went to Ruth 1, and it's in the Spirit-Filled Life Bible. So I hope you have one, but it's on, it'll be on your iPad too. And right next to um, Ruth 1, Kingdom Dynamics said tenacity, that's being tenacious, that takes the throne. And that's right into it. Then you started uh, teaching from that very verse. So I, I, I think God's saying you're tenacious. So ladies, we thank you for coming. Go home blessed. Go home filled. Please don't be upset if we didn't have time to give your particular prophetic word today. But give it to the people in your car or anybody around you. Learn to... To you know, whenever you speak forth the word of God, you're you are preaching. You're preaching the good news. So, be safe, Father. We just pray again for everyone to get home safely. We thank you that you brought them safely, and um, just carry us on, Lord. Cause us to to be what you've created us to be, and help us to know that that's still in us. That is not too late. And we thank you for everything you did in Jesus' name, and are going to do. Amen. So, love you girls, and we're going to see you next time. And, oh, turn your name tags in, clean up your table, thank anybody that works here that you see, and we're going to clear this room for um, them to finish their own job.